I'm going to talk a little bit about my practical experience, but I will also link it up to the theory and the research in entrepreneurship. So, ये जो है ये थोड़ा सा आपके लिए अलग होगा. इन दो चीजों को जोड़ना, यानी research और practical experience, ये जैसे हिरन मेजी ने बोला, थोड़ा सा कम मिलने को, कम देखने को मिलता है, क्योंकि ज़्यादातर जो entrepreneurship के लोग हैं, वो entrepreneurship में रहते हैं, और जो पढ़ाने वाले होते हैं, वो पढ़ाते हैं, और दोनों मिलते नहीं. तो ये जो संगम होता है, तो वो थोड़ा सा अद्भुत होता है और उस संगम के बारे में मैं बात करूँगा. तो जैसे हिरन मेजी ने कहा, my topic is limited resources, unlimited ambition, सीमित साधन, असीमित आकांशा. और ये किसी भी क्षेत्र में हो सकती है, जरूरी नहीं कि एक बिजनेस में हो. तो ये तीन नाम तो आप सब परिचित हैं, तीन बहुत महत्वपूर्ण मशहूर भारतीय हैं. एक महात्मा गांधी, इनको कह सकते हैं, he was a political entrepreneur. एक वर्गीस कुरियन साहब, जिन्होंने अमूल को को का प्रतिपादन किया, उसका उसको बनाया, नए सिरे से, और ये नारायण मूर्ति, ये इन्फोसिस के जन्मदाता. तो ये तीनों एंटरप्रेन्योर्स थे, और आप सभी जानते हैं, इन तीनों का गुजरात कनेक्शन है. महात्मा गांधी गुजरात में ही जन्मे, अहमदाबाद में आए वापस, वर्गीस कुरियन साहब केरला के मूलतः हैं, लेकिन गुजरात में आए, नारायण मूर्ति, आप लोग कम जानते होंगे कि वैसे तो बेंगलोर के हैं, बेंगलुरु के, लेकिन आए अहमदाबाद में ये रिसर्च एसोसिएट हुआ करते थे, तो एक तरह से इन्होंने भी काफी कुछ गुजरात उन्होंने कुछ भी बहुत कम साधन से उन्होंने चालू किया और नारायण मूर्ति ने तो कुछ हजार रुपए अपनी बीवी से उधार लेके इन्फोसिस चालू किया तो इन सब के पास सीमित साधन थे तो सीमित चीजों से असीमित जो फल है वो किस तरह से लिया जाए उसे उद्यम या आंतरपनाशक कहते हैं तो जैसे मैंने आपसे कहा and practical experience, तो एक तरह से कबीर के दो जो दो अंश हैं, वो मैं जोड़ने की कोशिश करूँगा। और यहाँ मैं इनको श्रद्धांजलि देना चाहता हूँ। ये मेरे कॉलीग थे पर्ड्यू यूनिवर्सिटी में आर्नी कूपर। ये एक तरह से मेरे कोऑथर भी हैं, दो पेपर्स मैंने इनके साथ लिखे। लेकिन 1970 में जो एंटरप्रेन्य और उसके जो जन्मदाता थे, the person who co-chaired the conference at Purdue University in 1970, उस समय तो मैं निकर पहन के घूमता था, मुझे इस सब का कुछ अंदाज नहीं था, so he founded the discipline of entrepreneurship, और कॉलीग थे, and he got me interested in the academic side of entrepreneurship, तो उनकी बदौलत मैं इकोनॉमिस्ट था, entrepreneurship का एक्सपीरियंस थोड़ा हो गया था, उन्होंने मुझे entrepreneurship discipline में खींचा और मैं बहुत शुक्रगुजार हूँ उनका 2012 में उनका निधन हुआ पूरी उम्र पाके गए वो पूरा प्रभाव देके गए आज आप इधर एकेडमी ऑफ अंतर्पन एकेडमी ऑफ मैनेजमेंट की वेबसाइट पे देखें तो ये मानद प्रोफेसर्स में से गिने जाते हैं पिछले 100 साल में तो इनके साथ मुझे काम करने का सौभाग्य मिला तो एक तो यहाँ लंच पार्टी की थी संडे को तो उसमें आप देख सकते हैं कि सभी तरह सभी देशों के लोग थे अमेरिकी चाइनीज हिंदुस्तानी मलेशियन अफ्रीकन अमेरिकन सभी तो सभी रंगों के सभी जातियों के सभी धर्मों के लोग थे तो ये सिमिलेक्स जो है हमने बनाया और निन्यानवे से लेके 2013 तक चला जैसे मैंने आपको बताया � फिल्म इसमें फोटो में है तो हमने चलाया और जो गलतियां मैंने वहाँ की बहुत सारी गलतियां की हमने वो वो मुझे एक तरह से वरदान में मिली कि उसी से फिर ये ज्ञान का उदय हुआ तो ये सिमिलेक्स तो पहली कंपनी और जैसे मैंने आपको बताया कि 2013 से आज तक ये एसेंशियल लिखा जाता है एस एंशियल लेकिन इसका तो ये कंपनी जो है कैपिटल मार्केट्स का जो डेटा है इन्वेस्टर रिलेशंस की बदौलत जो है इसको डिजिटाइज कर रहा है तो इस पे हम लोग काम कर रहे हैं अब सिमिलेक्स तो मैंने आठ साल चलाया उसको आई वाज द द कोसीईओ ऑफ दैट कंपनी लेकिन 
वहां अमेरिका में इस तरह के रूल्स होते हैं कि दे अलाउड यू टू हैव टू फुल टाइम जॉब्स अब भारत में यह संभव नहीं है और वैसे भी यदि संभव होता तो भी माइका जैसे इंस्टीट्यूशन के चलाते हुए मैं एक कंपनी नहीं चला सकता तो अभी मेरा जो रोल है इसमें एक्टिव है बट इट स्टिल एडवाइजरी जो काम करते हैं इसमें पूरी टीम है चौंतीस लोगों की और जो फाउंडर है इसके प्रदीप सेठ वो वो इसको चलाते हैं मैं आई एम स्टिल इन्वॉल्व ऑन डे टू डे बेसिस बट इन एन एडवाइजरी कैपेसिटी तो ये कहने का मतलब ये कि इक्कीस साल से मैं इस ऑन्टरप्रनरशिप की जर्नी पर भी हूँ इस यात्रा पे भी हूँ तो जो मैं आपके सामने रखना चाहता हूँ वो तीन शब्द हैं ज्ञान दर्शन और चरित्र यानी वॉट यू नो बिलीव एंड डू और उसको साइकोलॉजी में कहें तो ए बी सी एटीट्यूड बिहेवियर एंड कॉग्नेशन इसमें जो सबसे ज्यादा जरूरी है वो है एटीट्यूड क्योंकि यदि एटीट्यूड सही नहीं होगा तो नॉलेज भी नहीं आएगी ज्ञान भी सही नहीं होगा और बिहेवियर फिर गलत होगा तो दर्शन जिसको बोलते हैं वो दृष्टि होती है जिसको बोलते हैं नजर तो नजर जो है इट्स द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू द वे इन विच यू लुक एट थिंग्स तो ये राहत फतेह अली साहब की ये नज्म है जो कि बहुत मशहूर कवाली है उनकी नजर ऊंची की तो दुआ बन गई नजर नीचे की तो हया बन गई नजर तिरछी की तो अदा बन गई नजर फेर ली तो कदा बन गई यानी कहने का मतलब वही आंख अलग अलग नजर से अभिव्यक्ति कर सकती है और अलग अलग नजर से देख भी सकती है तो एक मैं पहली आपके सामने रखना चाहूंगा ताकि आपको नजर ये समझ में आए कि क्यों ये जरूरी है क्योंकि जो हमें पता नहीं होता हम उसी से मारे जाते हैं जो सिमुलेक्स में हमने गलती की वो हमें पता नहीं था और मैं आपको अभी बता दू वो क्या गलती थी कि जो सिमुलेक्स में हमने प्रमुख गलती की जिसकी वजह से वो कंपनी जहां पहुंचना चाहिए था उसको वो पहुंची नहीं हमारी इच्छा थी कि उसको हम एक यूनिकॉर्न बनाए वो जाहिर है कि वो बनी नहीं उसमें जो सबसे बड़ी गलती हमने की वो दृष्टि की या नजर की थी या एटीट्यूड की थी वो ये कि ये रिसर्च लैब से निकला हुआ प्रोडक्ट था तो वो पूरी तरह से इट वॉज फुली फॉर्म तो कहने का मतलब ये कि हमने इस प्रोडक्ट को हू बहू लोगों के सामने मार्केट करना चालू कर दिया कि यानी ये सो इट वॉज अ प्रोडक्ट लुकिंग फॉर अ सोल्यूशन जबकि होना ये चाहिए था कि हमारे पास कुछ केपेबिलिटीज थी उन केपेबिलिटीज को लेके हमें मार्केट में ये देखना चाहिए था कि क्या नीड्स हैं मार्केट में क्या लोगों की पेन पॉइंट्स हैं उसको हम किस तरह से हाउ वी कैन एड्रेस दो यदि वो हम करते तो वी वुड हैव रियली फाउंड सक्सेस ऑफ अ वेरी डिफरेंट ऑर्डर अभी जिस तर, जिस तरह से वो कंपनी बढ़ी और आगे चली पार्टली बिकॉज वी मेड दिस मिस्टेक अर्ली ऑन तो ठीक है इट वॉज अ माइल्ड मॉडेस्ट सक्सेस इट वॉज नॉट अज सक्सेस आई कैन बी वेरी अप फ्रंट एंड ओपन अबाउट इट and this was the major mistake that we made that we fell in love with the product not in love with the problem to ye drishti ki baat hai this is a problem of perspective you have to completely reorient the perspective from the product to the problem so this is the fundamental shift that i want to bring to your attention i hope that is fair enough okay all right so now i've shown you nine objects one is a mortar jisko bolte hain uh okli a uh, plow pole ya mu ya musal ek uh, pankha ek uh, jhadu ek uh, dhan rakhne ke liye chhota sa jo anaj ghar hota hai ek stamb ek uh, ghada aur uh, ek uh, ek uh, jo hal ka niche ka hissa hota hai wo maine aapke samne rakha hai और मैं आपसे पूछूंगा इन नौ चीजों को यदि आप जोड़ें तो क्या बनता है और यदि मैं बोलूं कि इनको आप जोड़ें तो एक हाथी बनता है तो आप शायद हंसने लगेंगे लेकिन ये नौ जो दृष्टि है ये एक हाथी की है कैसे ये सब लोगों ने सुना होगा ये ये कहानी सुनी होगी कि एक आ, कुछ अंधों ने जो जन्म से अंधे थे उन्होंने एक पालतू हाथी को देखा अलग अलग जगह से तो नौ थे किसी कहानी में छह बोलते हैं किसी कहानी में नौ बोलते हैं जो मूल कहानी है जो बुद्ध ने उदान वर्ग में कही थी उसमें नौ अंधे होते हैं और जैसे आप देख रहे हैं वो नौ अंधे इस पालतू हाथी को नौ अलग अलग जगहों से देखते हैं तो वो नौ अलग अलग उनकी दृष्टि आती है जो जो उसकी हाथी के दांत को देखता है उसको लगता है कि ये तो हल है यानी कोई तेज भाले की जैसी चीज है जो उसके सर पे हाथ रखता है उसको दिखता है उसको कि घड़ा है जो उसके कान को पकड़ता है उसको लगता है कि ये तो एक पंखा है जलने वाला पंखा 
जो इस तरह से अलग अलग जो दृष्टिकोण है जो पूछ को पकड़ता है उसको लगता है कि ये तो एक झाड़ू है जो उसके जो उसकी पीठ उसके जो छाती पे हाथ रखता है उसको लगता है कि ये ये तो एक धान का एक ये घर है और जो उसके पाव को लगता हाथ लगाता है उसको लगता है ये स्तंभ है तो मजे की बात यह है कि सबके सब सही थे और सबके सब गलत थे और सबके सब अधूरे थे तो कहने का मतलब ये जो भी हमारे सामने होता है आंतरप्रनर्स के हिसाब से जो भी हमारे सामने जो अपॉर्चुनिटी है वट एवर इज दर्चुनिटी दैट वी हैव इन फ्रंट ऑफ अस वी एवरीबॉडी परसीव इट वेरी डिफरेंटली सो दूसरी चीज जो मैं आपको कहना चाहता हूं वो ये है कि the art of entrepreneurship is seeing what everybody else has seen but seeing what nobody else has seen has seen so see what everybody else has seen but also see what others have not seen tabhi ja ke you'll be a smart blind person yani you have to see opportunities that others uh, have missed so again repeating see what others have seen but also see what others have missed so that is point number 2 fair enough all right so this point has also been made this point has also been made by uh, one of the most uh, prominent psychologists of our time she is a professor at stanford university unka naam hai carol dweck aur ye kitab kuch logon ne shayad dekhi hogi लेकिन यदि नहीं देखी होगी तो आप जरूर खरीदिए अमेजोन पे मिलती है किंडल पे मिल जाएगी आपको या आपकी लाइब्रेरी में मिलेगी और इस इस किताब की बहुत बहुत प्रशंसा की है बहुत लोगों ने बिल गेट्स ने भी कि ये बतलाता है कि किस तरह से आप में जो क्षमताएं हैं उसको किस तरह से उसकी पूर्ति की जा सकती है यानी अनलिमिटेड पोटेंशियल जो है आप में हाउ डू वी अनलॉक इट तो ये किताब उसमें बहुत मायने रखेगी क्यों it is really about perspective and about the nazar that i just talked about another word for it is mindset so what is carol dweck's take on it carol dweck's take on it is the distinction between what she calls a mixed mind a fixed mindset and a growth mindset ye drishti ki baat hai wohi cheezein jo aap dekhenge duniya mein yadi ek nazar se dekhen to fixed mindset hai dusri nazar se dekhenge to growth mindset hai kaise चैलेंजेस चुनौतियां आएंगी फिक्स्ड माइंडसेट बेसिकली सेज अवॉइड चैलेंजेस टिक टू द ट्राइड एंड टेस्टेड ग्रोथ माइंडसेट विल से एम्ब्रेस चैलेंजेस दैट इज वेयर ऑपरचुनिटी इज फिक्स्ड माइंडसेट सेज ऑब्स्टिकल्स गिव अप इजीली ये आप देख रहे हैं यहां पे ये हमने एक डायग्राम uh, uh, बनाया है यू गिव अप इजीली लेकिन जो ग्रोथ uh, माइंडसेट है दैट बेसिकली सेज in the face of uh, adversity you persist effort fixed mindset sees effort as futile growth mindset set sees effort as the path to mastery criticism uh, growth mindset fixed mindset ignores negative feedback fix in uh, growth mindset learns from criticism fixed mindset feels threatened by the success of others growth mindset seeks inspiration from others to ye परस्पेक्टिव की बात है वही चीज आप एक नजर से देख रहे हैं तो ग्रोथ माइंडसेट है और दूसरी नजर से देख रहे हैं तो फिक्स माइंडसेट है और ये ये की ये चीज यदि गीता में आप देखें तो कृष्ण करते हैं अर्जुन के साथ में अर्जुन जो सारी स्थिति है उनके पास ज्ञान की कमी नहीं थी ही वॉज द ग्रेटेस्ट वॉरियर ऑन अर्थ न्यू एवरीथिंग अबाउट फाइटिंग एंड वेपन सिस्टम एंड टैक्टिक्स लेकिन बिकॉज हिज माइंड सेट वॉज ऑफ फ्रेंड्स इन फैमिली he could not fight so krishna kya karte hain he gives the same situation he says look at it beta aise nahi aise dekho don't look at it from the point of friends and family look at it from the point of view of dharma so it's a little bit like that distinction between fixed and growth mindset that you look at the same situation with a very different set of lenses i hope that point is very clear and so so very important point the third point that i'm making is that important aha moment moments happen when there is a change of perspective so the same thing if you look at it from a growth mindset as compared to a fixed mindset you will have an aha moment remember aha is always about a shift in perspective it's the same aha that arjun had with krishna when he changed his perspective so that is the third point that i'm making now 
I have a couple of fun slides for you because you will re recognize them immediately. Shayadi koi Hindustani hoga jisne ye three idiots film nahi dekhi hogi. To usme maine char kirdaron ko liya hai aur aap turant samajh jayenge yadi aapne us film ko dekhi hai ki in sab ka mindset kitna farak tha. Pehle to Raju Rastogi apne aap par nirbhar nahi, depressed, a rat in the rat race, afraid of responsibility, lack of confidence, fear of failure, fixed mindset, growth mindset nahi tha inka. Dusri taraf Chatur a little bit of a growth mindset kam se kam wo seekhne ki koshish kar rahe the but a lot of fixed elements as well kitabi kida rattu tota rattu tota dusron ko impress karne ki koshish over confident driven good point khud garz life is a zero sum game kisi ko jeetne ke liye kisi ko harna padta hai bas har qeemat pe kamyabi jealousy apne muh miyan mithu study for marks obedient hard working good point lekin dusron ko niche dikhana so he had some elements of the fixed mindset, elements, some, uh, most elements of the fixed mindset, but some elements of the growth mindset. Virus, totally fixed mindset. Zindagi ek race hai, kisi ko jeetne ke liye, kisi ko harna padta hai, conventional approach to life, no compassion, competition is the only way, cruel, no respect, egocentric, waste of time is a crime, good point by the way, not appreciative, Defined cut and dry path, opposed criticism. So a lot of elements of fixed mindset, only a few elements of growth mindset. And then finally, the ultimate, ultimate growth mindset person. Ye jo pose hai rancho ka ya Amir Khan ka, that says it all. Sari dunya khuli hai, sari dunya mere liye hai. Ye sara jahan hai mere liye, mast baharo ka mein aashik. So that kind of attitude. <clears throat> so what does his attitude in life consist of? Kabil bano, kamyabi ke piche mat bhago. Dosti sabse badi dollar. Log kya sochenge? Koi farak nahi padta. Har pal ka maza lo. Express, not impress. Sabse sikha, simple living and high thinking. So chautha point jo mene aapko bataya, wo hai three idiots. Aur usme aap dek sakte hai कि जो किरदार हैं और मैंने पांच छह और का बनाया है वो मैं आपको दिखाऊंगा नहीं लेकिन उसमें जो भी किरदार हैं उन सब का माइंडसेट आपको बहुत अच्छे से समझ में आ जाएगा और बढ़िया बात ये है कि इसमें से दो का माइंडसेट या उनकी दृष्टि फिल्म में परिवर्तित होती है राजू रस्तोगी का आपने देखा होगा कि वो बिल्कुल बदल जाता है आखिर में और इसी तरह से वायरस का वीरु सहस्त्र बुद्धे का the mindset bilkul badal jata hai dono fixed mindset se growth mindset mein aa jate hain aur wohi journey hai entrepreneur ko lene ke liye wohi journey jo hai the entrepreneur has to take that same journey to ye rancho ka aapne dekha hoga to kehne ka matlab ye ki to summarize entrepreneurs and this is the fifth point that i'm making entrepreneurs jaise maine shuru mein bola ki no believe and do they need to do all three things uh, differently so let me repeat that point. Entrepreneurs need to know, do, and believe things differently. How? Drishti to mena bataya. Have a growth mindset. But the second point about Drishti that I'm going to share with you is embrace uncertainty. So ye bahut mehatvapun baat hai. Ye log bahut kam samajhne paate hai. To isko samajhna bahut awashak hai. Or idhi aap isko samaj jayen. So you will suddenly see a whole series of opportunities open up for you. So how is that possible? So <clears throat> the most important point is the distinction between risk, uncertainty, and ambiguity. So risk is where you know the outcomes and you know the probabilities. Right? So if you play, uh, if you play uh, roulette or if you play teen patti, you know the outcomes and you know the probabilities of those outcomes. So it's all about risk. Ambiguity is where you know the outcomes but do not know the probabilities. That is a little bit like a political election. You know who, who the political parties are. One of them is going to win. In the US it is uh, <clears throat> either uh, the Democrats or the Republicans. In India it's UPA, NDA or the third front. You know the outcomes, but you don't know the probabilities. 
But the most interesting part is where you have uncertainty, where you don't even know the outcomes and you don't know the probability. So let me go back to the slide that I had here. <clears throat> An entrepreneur hates risk and loves uncertainty. Why? Because this is the sixth point that I'm making for you. Uncertainty equals opportunity. So let me repeat it. Uncertainty is opportunity. Why is that? Let me go back to the growth mindset and more importantly to the metaphor of the elephant. Uncertainty means you do not know whether it is an elephant or a camel or for that matter, a hippopotamus. You don't know what those outcomes are and you don't know what those probabilities are. And because it is uncertain, there is opportunity. If, the, if it becomes very clear that um, it is either an elephant, which is an opportunity or a, or a camel, which is not an opportunity, then the whole world will know about it. There is that opportunity will not remain for long if it becomes very, very clear. So the first point to remember is embrace uncertainty. Wherever there is a lot of change, a lot of dynamism, when things are moving fast, when things are being disrupted, that is where entrepreneurs get going. So let me give you some examples. I have three examples here. Jeff Bezos, <clears throat> you all know how Amazon was founded. He was a consultant in a financial firm in New York. And he was looking at this new thing that had just been created called the internet. And the internet was doubling at a rate of 80% in a month. So he said, Itna tezi se hi koi bad rahi hai, to aas -paas ki sab ko badal degi. So I have to just basically get on a car and go to where the internet is kind of changing things the most uh, effectively and efficiently and at the fastest pace that is Silicon Valley. So he decided to put himself, uh, he and his wife quit their jobs, got into a car and along the way examined the opportunities, including retail, including music, including books, including all kinds of things, groceries, and ultimately came up with the idea that the books are the most interesting opportunity to pursue uh, first. And later on, of course, they pursued all the other opportunities. So combining internet, which was changing very fast with business opportunities was basically the uncertainty that Jeff Bezos uh, dived into. All your rooms. So you've all heard of Ritesh Agarwal. And he also saw Airbnb come in. And uh, he saw that uh, these Airbnb and all of these companies were doing business in a particular way. But in India, the problem was of quality. It was not that rooms were not available. A certain quality had to be uh, maintained. So basically, he modified the, Oyo, the uh, Airbnb model and created Oyo Rooms. And Nokri.com, uh, Sanjeev Bhikchandani, he also saw, basically, he, used to he found it very interesting that business newspapers used to have job ads. And then when he saw the internet, he said, these must be combined. And that is basically where uh, the opportunities came from. So it's, again, taking something which is uncertain, ambiguous, not very clear. Uh, that is where you jump in. Risk you don't deal with because risk is very predictable. It's for insurance companies and gamblers. Okay, <clears throat> so very quickly, I will say that an entrepreneur has to deal with seven uncertainties. Uh, product, market, uh, team, finance, environmental channel, and regulatory. Now, normally, when you talk to entrepreneurs, the mistake that we made is that the biggest uh, barrier to success in entrepreneurship, if you ask most entre entrepreneurs, they're all struggling to raise funds and they will tell you it's finance. It turns out that finance is not the most important uncertainty uh, that matters. The most important uncertainty is market uncertainty. Uh, market uncertainty basically means, have you identified a problem for which people will be 100% willing to pay money and so, so that, is, that is the most important thing. And that is where people often make mistakes. In our own entrepreneurial journey at Similex, this was the major mistake that we made, that we didn't go after a targeted problem. We were owners of a solution looking for a problem. And that is exactly the wrong way to do it. And basically, there are three ways to identify uh, these uh, market gaps. One is to look at intersections. I've already told about 
uh, intersections in, in the previous uh, comment. But you can also look for complaints. So wherever people you, you find people complaining, that is where there is a business opportunity. And wherever there are anomalies, you know, as I mentioned in the case of Jeff Bezos, if something is growing too fast or going in the wrong direction or moving in a particular way that you don't understand, very often it's about, uh, it's a new market. And very often, and you have to come up with a new business model. Uh, we won't talk about business models here, but, uh, but that is, uh, that is uh, market uncertainty. Now, usually the second uncertainty is product uncertainty. That is, can you build a product? Once you've identified a need, can you build a product to satisfy that need? Now, when you say, when I say satisfy the need, the product has to satisfy the need 100%. You should find a customer who should be 100% satisfied. That is the definition of a product. That is, it satisfies a need completely. That is where also in Simulex, in our first startup, we made a mistake. Our product was satisfying some needs partially, and that is not a good way to, uh, to operate. So what you need to do is iterate, keep on repeating and creating better and better products. And that's how you resolve market uncertainty. I mean, product uncertainty. And through the product, through better and better products, you also get better and better handles on market uncertainty. And that's how you resolve them as well. The third market, the third uncertainty is, okay, you can build a product, but can you build a team to scale it up? This is where the third uncertainty comes in and not everybody can build a team. Now, to build a team, you need inspiration. And I'll talk about that a little in, in just a few minutes. Uh, 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 and then you also need speed uh, to, uh, in terms of team. Then the fourth uncertainty usually that you have to resolve in this order is uh, finance. Remember, if you've taken care of the first three or you have a line of sight to the first three, money will come to you. But there is one caution, do not, uh, money has a language. The language is called finance. Finance is not easy. If you do not have a background in finance, get a co-founder or get, a, get an advisor or get a chartered accountant and work on the financials of the company. Because remember, and this is the seventh point that I'm making, finance is a window to your operations. This is a way in which you communicate to um, your investors and your whole ecosystem, uh, how, what you have in your mind. So this is basically where finance meets value and you need to do this properly. For our second startup, believe me, we have gone through over 60 iterations, six zero over the last several years of our financial and operating plan because we are constantly refining it, constantly refining our value proposition and constantly refining how we deal with our uncertainties. So as I said, you may have to go through 60, 70 iterations. That's not uncommon at all. And I wanted to give you that, uh, uh, that point. Fifth is channel uncertainty. This is something that you, um, that you know very well. Channel means how will the customers find you? I may have the best product, but jungle mein more nacha kisne dekha? Uh, so B2C, this is becoming much easier with social media. B2B is still tough in the questions I can address um, these. By the way, all of you who are watching on Facebook and on Zoom, please send in your questions. As I'm sharing these slides with you, as I'm sharing my thought process with you, I'm sure you have all kinds of questions. We will of course address them uh, when Mr. Nagarajan um, opens up the floor for Q&A. But in the meantime, please tweet them, please uh, put them in the chat uh, comments. Uh, please get them to our attention. In many ways, we are finding you, uh, our clients, at this point through this method. Uh, the sixth is environmental uncertainty. As you know, we have a lot of this right now. We faced this in our first business with a dot-com crash. This was 2000. We faced this also, uh, the second uncertainty, major environmental uncertainty with the financial crash in 2008 with our first business. And now with our second business, we are seeing this with the COVID crash in 2020. So you have to, of course, deal with it. But again, this throws up, as I said, uncertainty is your friend with every opportunity, with every uncertainty that comes, there comes opportunity. And finally, um, and by the way, in our business, uh, the uh, COVID has required better disclosure. Uh, and since our startup is about investor relations and better disclosures in essential, uh, this is an opportunity for us. 
Similarly, uh, the, uh, the regulatory environment, remember the government has a lot of regulations. And this is extremely important in pharma and is extremely important in finance, especially with regard to data privacy, with regard to what you can or cannot do, with regard to disclosures, etc. So this too is an opportunity for our startup because now the government has mandated something called ESG, environmental and social governance. This is something that all the top 1000 companies in the country are mandated to do. And this has now become an opportunity for our startup. So I hope you have understood, and this is the eighth point that I made, uh, that, uh, that uh, there are seven uncertainties. Most people think that uh, financial uncertainty is the one that makes or break, breaks a business. I would say that it is the first one. How quickly you're able to identify a market segment and a pain point that you can satisfy 100% through iterating the product and through working with the team, then if you master the first three uncertainties in that order, the fourth will come. And then of course, channel, uh, environmental and regulatory also can, uh, can come. So here is a wonderful verse uh, that I love from Alama Iqbal. And he basically, this is something that the entrepreneur has to do to keep all the seven uncertainties together and the team motivated. You have to inspire everybody and you have to be a source of inspiration to everybody in your ecosystem, your funders, your clients, your uh, team members, of course, because they're all taking a chance at you, chance with you. So you have to inspire everybody. And so you have to pick, you have to paint the biggest picture. So here I have the photo of a peregrine falcon. Tu shahi hai, parvaz hai kaam tera. Parvaz means to soar high. Tere saamne asma aur bhi hai. It's the task of the entrepreneur to show the new asmans, the new skies, the new horizons that are available. Trust. Again, I will not spend too much time on this, but this is the um, uh, this is the uh, ninth point that I'm making. Entrepreneurs have to build trust. How do they do so? It's a topic for another uh, conversation, but this is the ninth point that I'm making. Trust, credibility, reliability, intimacy, intimacy, and self-orientation. They are linked. Trust increases with credibility, reliability, and intimacy, and decreases with self-orientation. So it means the more credible you are, the more reliable you are, the more intimate you are with the customer's problems, the more intimately you take his problems as your own, the bigger the trust element. So that is the, uh, the ninth point that I'm making. And then finally, I want to make a point about uh, networks. Now, uh, th there's something called the Dunbar number. I won't go into the details of this, but essentially it, me, it says one, one human being can only know about 150 people well. This is the size of a band in a tribe. If you're in a tribe, then 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 you're in a tribe. In a band of robbers, you can never have more than 150. In a company, in an army, all over the world, throughout history, you've had only between 100 and 200 people because because more than that, you cannot know. Now, why is this important? So this, by the way, is the largest number of friends and close relatives that you can be involved with. Now, why is this important? So this is the Dunbar number. Remember this. This is the, so the 10th point that I'm making is how do you leverage your network? So Mark Granovetter wrote one of the most powerful papers ever written in social sciences in 1974. On Google Scholar, this has had 50,000 citations which is amongst the biggest in the social sciences. And he says that there are two kinds of people that you know. One are close friends and relatives and the others are acquaintances or friends of friends. Now the close friends can only be 150 or fewer, but your acquaintances can be many, many more. They can be thousands. I'm sure if I look at Hiranmayji's Rolodex, he has thousands of people. If I look at Mr. Nagarajan's Rolodex, he has thousands of people but he only knows 150 people well or fewer. So why is that point important? Now, Mark Granovetter pointed out that for jobs, partnerships and business opportunities, your strong ties are not important. It's your weak ties. So he said, it's the strength of your weak ties. Now, why is this point important? This is extremely important because your close friends and relatives are likely to know each other. So through their ecosystem, you're not able, you're not likely to get much more information than you 
already have. You're not likely to get many more connections than you already have. Some, yes, but not many more. But it's only through your weak ties, that is friends of friends or acquaintances, that you can get a lot more information. So this is the diagram that he creates. So uh, the strong ties are shown by the strong lines and the weak ties are shown by the thin lines. You know thousands of people, but you only interact closely with 150. But you must leverage your weak ties. That is the crux of entrepreneurship. And that's the 10th point that I'm making. I'm happy to address this a little bit more in Q&A. Uh, so it's uh, weak ties, the strength of weak ties. Now, why do I say this? I say this because as an entrepreneur, if somebody invites you to a meeting, uh, which is interesting, go, even though it may be a little farther away from you. Why did I agree to do this talk the moment Mr. Um, Mr. Mahanta asked me to? Uh, it is because this is a way for me to build weak ties. Now, that is not the only reason I also enjoy it. But if I do this mindfully, if I really do this in a way that adds value to you, some of you will remember it. I'm not only doing it for weak ties, but I'm doing it primarily because I want to add value. And if I add value to you, I mean, that is the law of karma. Nature will add, will add value to me. So if you think of it as as uh, a way of basically uh, making an offering to, uh, to society, I think you will find that it will come back to you. So this is Tulsi Das basically uh, put this very succinctly. Tulsi is sansar mein bhaati bhaati ke log sabse hasmil boliye nadi nav sanjog. Now what is nadi nav sanjog? He says, if you're trying to cross the river, be friends with everybody. There's somebody who will find you will find a way for you to cross the river. Nadi Nao Sanjog. So now remember, there are seven rivers that you have to cross. The market, the product, the team, the financial, the, uh, the, uh, the environmental, the regulatory, and the channel. Uncertainties, right? There are seven rivers that you have to cross. So you have to look for seven Nadi Nao Sanjogs. And that is where the strength of your weak ties will come in. So and now I'm coming to the very fast last set of slides. I will be, I'll finish on the dot in 45 minutes, uh, including the introduction time so that we leave uh, time for Q&A. This is one of my favorite uh, poems. We had the opportunity to have Mr. Piyush Mishra at MICA uh, about a year ago. So he took uh, a beautiful poem by Fez, which is Kuch Ish Kiya, Kuch Kaam Kiya, and he created his own version of it. So, so basically I'd ask you, to go on the web and look at his full poem, Kuch Ish, Ish Kiya, Kuch Kaam Kiya. But there, four lines that he says are very prescient. Wo kaam bhala kya kaam hua jisme na jaan ragarti ho. Wo ishq bhala kya ishq hua jisme na baat bigarti ho. So by the way, this is the 11th point that I'm making. Entrepreneurship is like falling in love. You will... It is hard work. Love is not easy. Ishq is not easy. And you will also suffer many disappointments. In fact, it would not be Ishq. Yadi baat, yadi usme jaan nahi ragarti ho, aur baat nahi bigarti ho, to wo Ishq nahi hai. Isi tarah se, yadi aapki ragarai nahi hui, aur aapki baat nahi bigri, ek nahi sao bar nahi bigri, to entrepreneurship nahi hai. So how do you deal with it? So this is the final thing that I will share with you. This is my, um, uh, this is uh, the twelfth point that I'm going to make, and I'll repeat those points very quickly in a minute, and then we can do Q and A. So this is my friend. I can't say he is a close friend. He is part of my weak ties, uh, but uh, he is somebody that I admire a lot, and he said something to me, I think seven years ago or six years ago, I casually. Uh, that has stayed with me. And he has given me what is called the 5, 10, 15 rule. He said, if you persist, if you do what entrepreneurs are supposed to do, and I've talked about what I believe entrepreneurs need to do, then you will be successful. You will be successful in 10 years. If you're lucky, you will be successful in five. And here is the most interesting point. If you are unlucky, you'll be successful in 15. So you need to have that stamina. You need to have that stamina. You can never look for a quick entry or exit. That is basically what you have to 
uh, focus on. And this is my absolute last slide. Uh, most people know that uh, I love Hindi films. This is from my very early childhood when I was in very short, short pants from a film called Prince, which was released in 1969. And of, I know thousands of Hindi songs as Hindi film songs, as I'm sure all of us do. And this is my absolute favorite. This is also one of the longest songs ever recorded in Hindi film, so in the, in Hindi film history. It's about 10 minutes long. The full version is available on the internet. The film version is only about two, two and a half minutes. And it's also filmed in my birthplace in Jodhpur in the stables of uh, the Bhanaja of Jodhpur. So anyway, but I'm just, I've just chosen a few lines uh, that in my view exemplify the philosophy of life and the philosophy of entrepreneurship. And that is where I'll conclude and open up uh, the, uh, the talk for questions, which is, uh, uh, and I, I guess I'll take two more minutes and just quickly walk you through the 12 points and indicate which ones are extremely, extremely important. And then maybe we can have a conversation. Rahi hu naya anjan dagar pyara bada hai pyara hai bada jeevan ka safar nikla hu main apni masti mein malum nahi manzil hai kidhar ye badhte hue bechain kadam payenge tikana lagta hai pal bhar ko na hum aaram kare do haath hazaron kaam kare kismat ki shikayat kya karna bhagwan ko kyun badnaam kare ek roz hamare haathon se badle ka zamana lagta hai so to summarize the 12 points. Uh, we made a first mistake when we fell in love with our product at Simulex, not in love with the customer. Second point that I made, the essence of entrepreneurship is to see what others have seen, but, but, see, but think or see what no other person has, has seen or thought. Third, an aha moment comes when you have a change of perspective. I talked about the Krishna and Arjun uh, uh, conversation. I've also share, shared with you the change of perspective in three idiots. That was the fourth point that I was making. Raju Rastogi, Viru Sahasrabuddhe, and, um, uh, and Chatur. They all, uh, two of them at least exemplified a change of mindset. And then I talked about how you need to know, believe, and do things. Uh, I talked about the growth mindset and uncertainty being an opportunity. I talked about Finance being a window to operations, uh, ordering of these seven uncertainties, how market uncertainty is the most important. I talked about trust, weak ties. I talked about how entrepreneurship is a little bit like falling in love with the same heartbreaks and heartaches, but ultimately as satisfying as truly falling in love. And finally, that it's a tough path, but if you persist, I follow the Bhik Chandani rule, you will be successful. So with that, with that uh, mindset, let me turn the floor back to Mr. Uh, Nagarajan uh, for Q&A. Thank you, Professor Sailendraji. It has been a very, very wonderful session. And it was very good. You have touched your life's life. और फिल्मी दुनिया को भी में भी हम सबको ले गए और आपका खुद का कहानी भी बताई और बहुत सारे लेसेंस हैं जो आपने भी सीखे हैं वो भी बहुत बताया है काफी सारे क्वेश्चंस हैं बहुत ही अच्छे अच्छे क्वेश्चंस हैं और मैं शुरू करना चाहूंगा जो शुरुआत में हमने रैंचो की बात किया था तो उसका एक क्वेश्चन है जो अनुष्का दुबे पूछे थे जी हां कि हाउ मच बेनिफिशियल इज आवर केयर फ्री एटीट्यूड टुवर्ड्स एनीथिंग वो केयर फ्री रहने से कुछ फायदा क्या होता है ऐसे पूछ रहे हैं what is your take on that? Right. So, uh, carefree, I, I, I view it as, uh, it is not the same thing as not serious. Carefree means, dil pe mat le yaar. There's another line that is used in some Hindi film, I don't know where, somebody will tell me where the reference is. Dil pe mat le yaar. You know, don't take everything too seriously. Because things move so fast that you have to be nimble and uh, agile with it. The carefree attitude basically means I'm not attached to anything. I don't take uh, because this too shall pass. So carefree does not mean not serious. That is, so don't make that mistake. As long as you can be carefree and serious at the same time, that is one aspect of carefree is that failures will happen, but you don't 
but you have a growth mindset, you take it as a learning opportunity and profit from it. So that is my take on Carefree. Right. And uh, how attitude matters to get solutions or problems generated through your own ideas? Partesh Mankodi bolte hain ki attitude ka kya role hai problems or ideas generate karne mein. So dekhe, uh, uh, to, to, uh, so, so let me go back to the example that I gave, right? Uh, somebody has put it very beautifully to see what everybody else has seen, but to see what everybody else has missed. So the most important thing uh, is to basically figure out where is the unsolved problem or the unaddressed challenge or the unaddressed pain point. So that is a matter of attitude. And the att remember, the attitude, where was the mistake in our attitude, right? In our first company. So I'll be very upfront. The mistake was we fell in love with the product. We did not fall in love with the customer. So because it was a research product, it was targeted to research questions. We were kind of force fitting it to a, a business opportunity. And as it turned out, so by the way, let me actually mention uh, that as part of this, you will have to pivot. <coughs> so this is uh, another point that I want to make. Pivoting is something that you have to do. Pivot basically means that you went after a certain opportunity. You find that that opportunity is not something that you can satisfy uh, completely. So you pivot, you change to a slightly different opportunity. And when you do that, you come up with a different solution, a slightly different customer segment, and then you pivot again. In our first startup, we pivoted three times. And ultimately, the customer that we started working with, and that became our major customer, was the US Department of Defense and the Department of Homeland Security. It was basically for modeling security solutions, modeling crises like the COVID crisis that we have right now. Similarly, for our new startup, Essential, we pivoted several times. Initially, we focused on services. Then we focused on uh, custom solutions uh, uh, for uh, people who were trying to solve other problems. Now we have developed our own platform where we provide a product that people can customize and basically uh, solve problems th through that. So, so that is what uh, attitude is all about. The attitude of focusing on problems as opposed to products. That is one example. Our uh, next question is, sir. One uh, question is that which you are asking your learning is asking you what what drives you to keep going when it is really tough. What is the most important part of your whole business journey? Harsh Shah is asking. Yeah. So how do you keep going when the going is tough? Well, this is something that every entrepreneur faces. I have not come across an entrepreneur who did not face tough times. Very, very unusual. Hoga koi, ikka dukka kahi, who did not face tough times, but kahi na kahi to problem aegi hi. Partly because you're dealing with so many uncertainties, right? I talked about seven classes of uncertainties, each of which requires focused attention. So what keeps you going? The thing that keeps you going is having people around you who believe in you. So that is one more reason Co-founders Co complex that no one person can have all the technical as well as business and financial skills uh, to do everything by himself. That is one reason. But in my view, that is a less important reason. The more important reason is that if there are two people in the business who are constantly motivating each other, you basically, uh, 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 so let me give you the best example of this. And this time, let me give you an example from the US entertainment industry. Though the two biggest acts in Western music were the Beatles and, uh, uh, and uh, Elvis Presley. Sabi jante hai. Beatles ko sabi jante hai. Elvis Presley ko. So Beatles ne ek bahut mahatvapoorn baat kahi ki all of us went mad. Individually, all four of us went mad, but there were other three who were there to pull, him, pull them back. Whereas when Elvis went mad, went mad, there was nobody to pull him back. So this is where having a good team, having a good set of co-founders, having a good set of advisors, 
board members, a spouse who believes in you is so important. हाँ एक साउंडिंग बोर्ड की तरह और एक फीडबैक भी मिलता है एंड दे कैन बी वेरी फ्रैंक विद यू एंड ऑल सो आई थिंक इस तरीके से को फाउंडर्स का भी रोल काफी महत्व होता है और देर कैन बी योर पर्सनल फ्रेंड्स आल्सो हु आर एज अ सॉर्ट ऑफ वेंटिलेशन थेरेपी जो हम बोल सकते हैं कि आपके फ्रस्ट्रेशन को दूर करके आप थोड़ा सा विदाउट एनी एजम्पन खुद को रख के भी बात कर सकते हैं राइट और दूसरा एक सवाल है सर बहुत ही जो प्रैक्टिकल इंपॉर्टेंस रखता है कि हाउ टू डू मार्केट सर्वे एंड चूज द राइट कस्टमर डॉक्टर आशा पाटिल पूछ रहे हैं इसमें मैं भी ये जानना चाहता हूँ कि बहुत ही सिंपल वे में हम कैसे एक मार्केट सर्वे कर सकते हैं बहुत सारे थियरीज भी हैं इसमें उसमें कुछ थियरी या मेथडोलॉजी जो आपको अच्छा लगे लगता होगा तो आप उसका भी बता सकते हाँ देखिये मार्केट सर्वे एक, एक चीज होती है एक तरीका होता है दूसरा होता है फोकस ग्रुप मार्केट सर्वे तो ये होता है यू चूज अ रैंडम सैंपल एंड आस दम व्हाट इज इट दैट दे वांट बाय द वे फॉर पॉलिटिकल एंटरप्रेन्योर्स दैट वर्क्स वेरी वेल प्रशांत किशोर आप लोगों ने नाम सुना होगा उनका उन्होंने सभी पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज को मदद की है द मेन थिंग दैट ही डज इज दैट ही गोज इनटू द मार्केट एंड ही आइडेंटिफाइज की टॉप 10 प्रॉब्लम्स क्या है और उनकी रैंकिंग क्या है दैट इज द मेन मंत्रा ऑफ अ सक्सेस तो वो मार्केट सर्वे करते हैं दैट इज वन मेथड दैट यू जस्ट गो इनटू द मार्केट एंड डू अ रैंडम सैंपल एंड आस दम कि व्हाट इज द मेजर प्रॉब्लम क्या है वगैरह उस तरह से कर सकते हैं बट देर आर मेनी अदर मेथड्स एंड अदर वन इज अ फोकस ग्रुप दैट इज यू आइडेंटिफाई पीपल हु हैव अ सर्टेन प्रॉब्लम एंड यू गेट देम इन अ रूम एंड यू हैव अ डिटेल्ड कन्वर्सेशन अबाउट इमोशंस दैट दे दैट आर इवोक्ड अराउंड द प्रोडक्ट और ऑफरिंग्स और सॉल्यूशंस और लैक देयर ऑफ सो दैट इज नंबर 2 नंबर 3 व्हिच इज समथिंग दैट आई से इज दैट यू कैन एक्चुअली बिल्ड प्रोडक्ट्स विदाउट डूइंग आइदर फोकस ग्रुप्स और मार्केट सर्वेस वन ऑफ कोर्स इज द रिसर्च लैब मेथड which also happens but i don't always recommend it it's very rare that a product can go un modified from the research lab to the field so there's a fourth method which i sort of talked about earlier which is talk about put yourself where there are complaints see normally we don't like people who complain but if you're an entrepreneur you should have an eye and an ear open eyes open and ears open for complaints जहां पे भी कोई शिकायत कर रहा है बोल रहा है यार ये कितना बेकार है कितना बर्बाद कितना बर्बादी से ये हो रहा है ऑल दिस इज समथिंग दैट बिकम्स एन अपॉर्चुनिटी सो लेट मी गिव यू एन एग्जांपल फ्रॉम एन इंडियन कॉन्टेक्स्ट फ्रॉम संजीव भिकचंदानी यू नो हिज नौकरी डॉट कॉम वॉज हिज थर्ड बिजनेस वॉट वॉज हिज फर्स्ट बिजनेस हिज फर्स्ट बिजनेस वॉज यू नो ही वर्क विद अ फ्रेंड हुज मेजर जॉब वॉज टू गो इन टू दी पैटेंट एंड ट्रेडमार्क ऑफिस एंड लुक अप all the uh, trademarks that were related to a particular uh, trademark that the company was looking for so is tarah se karte the and they used to pay be paid huge amounts because there was no electronic database so what he did is that he paid some college students and in two weeks he was able to digitize it completely so how was he able to get that because he because you know he found his friend complaining saying ki yaar ye to ekdam bekar ki cheez hai yaar bar bar jaake 80000 apply dekhne padte hain mujhe naam tab jaake mujhe pata chalta hai ki ये नया नाम जो है ये पुराने नाम की जैसे है कि नहीं सो ही बेसिकली टुक दैट एज एन अपॉर्चुनिटी थर्ड फिफ्थ वे इन विच यू कैन गेट एन अपॉर्चुनिटी इज वेर एवर यू आर इफ यू आर वर्किंग फॉर अ कंपनी आस्क टू मैन द कंप्लेंट्स लाइन मोस्ट कंपनीज विल हैव अ कंप्लेंट्स लाइन कि भाई कस्टमर सर्विस कहाँ है कंप्लेंट कहाँ है मैन इट एंड लिसन टू पीपल कंप्लेनिंग अबाउट अ पर्टिकुलर प्रोडक्ट दैट विल इमीजिएटली टेल यू फीचर दैट शुड बी इन अ न्यू वर्जन ऑफ दैट प्रोडक्ट go make it you will be a competitor but that's how progress happens so i hope uh, that gives you some ideas <clears throat> by the way thank I, you sir that was uh, yeah please uh, one other thing that i want to mention that uh, i i'm going to put up i'm going to send a pdf version of my slides to hiranmay ji he will share it very widely you're very welcome to uh, take a look at that hopefully uh, some of you may find some additional thoughts I know I went through a lot of material. Twelve points is a huge amount uh, to make. Even though basically there were two points: one is a mindset mindset shift, and the other one is the power of networks and how you leverage it. So at the core, there were only these two points, but there were twelve aspects of it that I talked about. But if you want to go back and uh, look at the talk again, the link will be shared with you, or better still, look at the slides. I'm sure they will spark many more ideas in you. Yeah. so nagraj ji so yes no issues 
So I think uh, we will uh, take the presentation and we'll upload it on the I Have Gujarat website. Actually, now for the benefit of audience, we have a event page where speaker ki profile presentation, video, everything will be there and you can see it. It will be developed and within a week it will be available. But for the ask ki participation certificate, we have a link in the comment section and on the Facebook page. You can also attend it. Uh, website ki, uh, ki webinar ki participation certificate bhi, uh, le sakte hain. Aur sir, abhi ek, uh, do questions hai. Last two, thi, two three questions hum, hum lenge abhi. Uh, ek, uh, Ashok rahe, Is risk a friend or enemy? How? Yeah. Risk is your enemy. Entrepreneurs never take, take risk. Remember, I made a distinction between risk, ambiguity and uncertainty. By risk, I mean, it's a very predictable thing. The outcomes are known. The probabilities are known. It's very predictable. If the same thing happens in the same sequence again, again, and again, with the same outcomes and the same probabilities, that is risk. Examples of risk are life insurance. Examples of risk are betting on horses. Examples of risk are, uh, uh, you know, uh, games of chance, right? Those are examples of risk. You de-risk your business as much as possible. Avoid risk. Risk is very predictable. Go for unpredictable situations. Uncertainty basically means where something is not clear. It's like there may be an opportunity, there may not be. There's an elephant or maybe there's not an elephant. So basically you have to go and check it out. And in the process of checking it out, you reduce the uncertainty. Now, sometimes it may happen that the uncertainty actually resolves in a way that says this opportunity is not worthwhile. By the way, that is very valuable information. Knowing that this is an opportunity that you should not go after is a very good resolution of uncertainty. Knowing that you should go after an opportunity is also a very good opportunity, uh, resolution of uncertainty. But uncertainty basically means something is not clear. And that is yeah, where yeah. the opportunity is. Yeah, I think deciding what not to do is a very, very important factor. Yes. In fact, uh, many times we have to say no when because uh, customers keep asking new different requests. Exactly. Uh, sometimes we have to take a call about what are the features that are we want to add and we need not add yes. based on our own strategy as an entrepreneur. So I think uh, saying no is also important uh, many a times. And another question which is related to psychology and teamwork and all that is how self-orientation reduces trust. I'm not able to see the person's name. It's just coming as G2. But the question I think is very, very uh, pertinent that how self-orientation reduces trust because it's very, very important in the interpersonal uh, space. Yeah. So, so if you have too much of self-orientation, in other words, if I'm focused on my needs and what I want out of it, as opposed to your needs and what you want out of it, uh, then the trust is reduced. So let me give you an example. Uh, one of the biggest trust builders in if you're trying to close a sale and you basically go in and say, look, this product, don't buy this more expensive product that I'm selling, buy a cheaper version because I think it'll be able to sell, it'll be able to satisfy your, your needs a little bit better. It'll be more cost effective for you. This is even in a, even if, you, even if you've been to an electronic store and there's a salesman who does this, it's very trust building. Even though it's a minor example of the person saying, I'm not trying to sell you a more expensive product, even though that'll give me a bigger commission or a bigger margin, but I'm selling you a lower product because I think it's better for you. Now, this is a very transparent example, but in all relationships, if you can do what is right for the other person and not right for you, that is, that is what is called the lack of self-orientation. So uh, always looking out for the other person and doing something that, that benefits him more than it benefits you, that is always trust enhancing. Sir, another question. I think last two questions we'll take. One question is about a, a small startup. What is the best approach to take? Uh, whether it should be B2C or B2B? Ah, very, very interesting question. We could do a whole um, session on that. And uh, so, I'll, so, okay, I'll give you the summary version. Of it. And uh, I'll, I'll share, being a professor, I'll share the research behind it. Um, the, uh, the Amar Bhide 
is a professor at Tufts University, B-H-I-D-E. You may want to look him up. He has a book that he wrote about 20 years ago, which is one, in, in my view, one of the finest books ever written on entrepreneurship. He looked at the 500 fastest growing businesses in the United States, the so-called Inc. Magazine 500. Fastest growing. Most of them, most of these businesses were B2B. Very few of these were B2C. So let me repeat again. There were, I think, four or five characteristics. I won't go into it. In the course that I used to teach at IIM Ahmedabad, I taught the entrepreneurship course at IIM Ahmedabad for eight years. This used to be my final lecture. So let me just summarize, give you the summary version of my answer. Most scalable businesses are B2B, not B2C. Because B2C comes with a certain trap. Either you are very small, right? Either you're a chaiwala or a radiwala, or you're an Apple, Apple computer. And there's almost nothing in between. Because So B2C does not scale very well at all, except at the very highest levels. On the other hand, B2B, especially products which are from 10,000 rupees to a few lakhs, you know, that you sell a certain customized solution that you sell for a particular business. There, the other advantage is that the personality of the entrepreneur becomes very important because you're providing a solution to a business and you can demonstrate credibility. You can demonstrate trust in a B2C environment where the typical product ticket size is very small. The element of trust is not there. The person will say, I'll try it. If it doesn't work, I'll throw it away. The trust element doesn't come in. So also the opportunity to, uh, to, to scale up the business in this fashion also doesn't arise. So either you scale it up very large or you're very small. So therefore, most interesting scalable opportunities in entrepreneurship are B2B. I hope that answers your question. And there's research to back it as I Yes. Uh, yes. So uh, one last question we would like to take. This is about something uh, being an academician. I think you should be able to give more uh, um, idea on this. And this is a subject which is close to all of our hearts, which is social entrepreneurship. So yes. uh, uh, Apurva Patel is asking, um, uh, what is the research gap in the field of social entrepreneurship? And do you think from both social and legal perspective, uh, re empirical research in this field should be undertaken? Yes. Okay. So yes, I, I, I could not agree with you more. Entrepreneurship, even though from 1970, I mean, it was 50 years ago that the field started, uh, that uh, it's been around for a while. I think there are huge gaps in the entrepreneurship literature. I know because I sort of follow it. I mean, I don't follow it as actively anymore, partly because I don't uh, uh, do that much of research in this field. Uh, I don't have much time since I have to run uh, my cup. Um, and also lots of other things, including a startup that is, but, th but there are huge gaps. And one of the biggest gaps is in the area of social entrepreneurship, partly because the way in which the seven uncertainties, by the way, the seven, the same seven uncertainties are there, but the balance is very different. And the way in which you motivate people is very different. In particular, uh, you need to, the, the notion of inspiration becomes extremely important. You need to inspire a team because in social entrepreneurship, people are not coming to you for high salaries. In fact, very often you will pay them much less. People are coming because they want to make a difference. People are, com are coming because they want to uh, contribute. People are coming because they want to feel uh, reducing somebody's pain. So therefore, uh, you're, uh, you're absolutely right that research in the field of social entrepreneurship is necessary. Having said that, having said that, I will say that Varghese Kurian, who in my view is one of the preeminent social entrepreneurs in the world, right? He managed to do, he managed to help India stave off mass malnutrition through providing an affordable, widely used protein in the form of milk. 
So he was the father, so to speak, of the white revolution in India, which was almost, in fact, equally important, I would say, as the green revolution. And unlike the green revolution, which had many fathers, the white revolution, by and large, had, a one, had one father. If you think about it, he also dealt with the seven, same seven uncertainties that I talked about. Right? The same seven uncertainties. What is it that the market will pay for? What is the need that I need to satisfy in the market? How do I go about doing it? What is the product? What is the, uh, what is the channel? He had to build all of those. What is the regulation? How do I build the finances? How do I deal with the environmental uncertainty? All of that. All of that he had to deal with. So the weightage may be different. Some of the um, emphasis may be different. But I would say, by and large, there is not much difference in, um, in the theory of entrepreneurship and, and how you deal with those seven uncertainties and the seven challenges. So I would say, yes, um, a lot of nuances can be looked at. A lot of, um, if you like, uh, case uh, um, data can be made available. Uh, by the way, um, I speak a little bit from experience because there's a wonderful social entrepreneurial project that I've been sort of involved with, something that many of you may have heard of called the Jaipur Foot. So um, all of these things are relevant there as well. And by the way, they came up with a very different business model, something that you would never contemplate of in, in a business, which is since their inception, almost 50, 50 years ago, uh, no, from 1972, so 48 years ago, uh, <clears throat> they have uh, provided all their services totally free of charge. It's available in uh, many, many major company, uh, countries, dozens and dozens of countries, including Pakistan across the border. Uh, they have a center in Karachi. But even there, it's provided completely free of charge. So the business model is very different. And uh, it's, as you can imagine, if it is provided completely free of charge, it is uh, built entirely on donations. And uh, the, but, uh, but the, kind of, uh, the kind of affection and the kind of love and the kind of gratitude that you get. I have uh, done, a, done a lot of work across the border in Pakistan. I have seen some of that. The kind of gratitude that you get, even though on the surface, you know, you may have a lot of differences, but but when you create something which is so wonderful in terms of social entrepreneurship, like the Jaipur Foot or the Amul uh, Milk, uh, uh, the, the whole Amul Milk ecosystem, you know, people raise their hands and people, people give you blessings. I think at the end of the day, uh, nothing can beat that. You may be a billionaire, but you will not get those kinds of blessings. So I think that, uh, is, that is what makes social entrepreneurship so worthwhile.